Welcome, everybody. We start with what is considered a big deal in the election projection sort of industry today, which is that 538 has published its first 2024 election projection, Trump versus Biden. And the results, can we call them stunning? Can we call them shocking? Can we call them surprising? I don't know where that noise came from. Uh, no, we really can't call them any of those things. We can call them corroborating of exactly what I've been laying out to you for months now. The 538 projection, who is favored to win the 2024 presidential election? Uh, 53 times out of 100 in simulations, Biden wins 53 out of 100 and in 47 out of 100 simulations, Donald Trump wins. What this means is that it is a toss up. What this means is that exactly what I have been saying, those who are confidently uh, declaring that Biden obviously will win are not basing their projection in reality. Those who are confidently projecting that it is Donald Trump who will win are not basing their projection in reality and that this is likely to come down to a relatively small number of votes in a small number of states. Now, let's dig into the uh, simulation a little bit more deeply. Uh, as you can see here, there is a sort of distribution curve and I'll, I'll describe what we're looking at for people who are only listening. Uh, there's a distribution curve of possible outcomes. And uh, as you can see, they are really grouped right around the middle. Uh, you could make the case that there are more scenarios in which Trump wins. This isn't really an accurate interpretation of this model. What the model does suggest is that some of Trump's paths to 270 electoral votes include a larger margin of victory than some of Biden's. And that's by the very nature of which states are definitely going to go Biden and Trump and, and sort of the realities of that. Uh, if you're interested in seeing the full list of polls that 538 uses in making these projections, you can do that. It's not super relevant to our discussion today. One of the interesting things is where uh, how it has the forecast changed over time. Now, what's interesting about this is that they only just now are issuing their full projection, but you can back out some of this data. And what you can see if you go back is that there was a period where it seemed as though Biden was likely to come away with more electoral votes than he is right now. But the scenario that in this 53 to 47 margin, 538 says is the most likely right now is Biden 275 and Trump 263. Remember, 270 is the line between winning and losing. And so that is a very, very, very small margin, significantly smaller than it was in 2020. So if you're trying to figure out how important is it that I vote generically, obviously the, the truth is because of the Electoral College, if you vote in California, it's less important that you vote than it is if you uh, vote in North Carolina or even more uh, Wisconsin or even more Arizona. We've talked about that, and that's part of why I'm against the Electoral College. But it is the system we have, and that's uh, the one that we will be uh, fighting this election over. Uh, but importantly, expecting a tighter electoral margin than in 2020 in terms of what are the critical toss up states they are as I've been saying, Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia. It is those five. And with those five potentially hangs in the balance who will be the next president of the United States. Uh, what are the closest races? The closest ones, according to this model, are Arizona, Nevada, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan. All of those are under a two point margin. Uh, and then you get to larger margins. And then uh, you can look at a whole bunch of other uh, scenarios here. Uh, what's the takeaway here? There is one and only one takeaway, which is to pat me on the back and to say, you know what, David, you're right. This is probably going to be close. And I'm, of, of course, kidding. There's nothing particularly stunning or difficult about my prediction, which is elections in the United States, given the hyper polarized nature of the country given that if you put an R or a D in front of a candidate's name, that gets you the lion's share of your potential vote. And then the rest is just sort of like, who can you convince from this much smaller group that might go one way and might go the other way? 
In addition to this, we have the reality that because we have no national popular vote contest, these are 50 individual popular vote contests, which then inform the Electoral College. A large swath of the country kind of doesn't matter because the partisan demographics are so skewed one way or the other. Although someday Texas may be close and may be in play for Democrats, we would love it to be. It's not in play this year. California is not in play this year. It's going to go to Democrats, period. Uh, so we end up with a scenario where really this is an election that will be decided by those voters in five or so states who are considering I might vote, I might stay home. I might vote for Biden or I might vote for Trump or I might vote third party or write somebody else in. So a country of 340 million, you obviously reduce that to the number of eligible voters. You then reduce that to the 60 or so percent that we expect to vote. And then you reduce this to the swing voters in the five key states. How many voters does this election depend on? It's probably five to 10 million with margins of about 250 to 500,000 in these five states. Is it depressing for me to explain it that way? In a way, is it realistic? It does appear to be realistic, particularly based on this 538 model. So the takeaway, it's going to be close. It would be a good idea for you to plan to vote and to convince others, you know, about how important it is to vote in this election. It is time to start thinking like voters and to make sure that kids understand the importance of voting, how it works, registering ballot initiatives, because so many kids just have no idea. That's why I wrote the new children's book. Think like a voter. I can think of no better time and no more important group of folks to try to reach. The book is now available at davidpackman.com slash book, where, by the way, you can get the first two books in the series as well. Think like a detective and think like a scientist. Really important stuff. Donate them to local libraries, classrooms, read them with the kids. davidpackman.com slash book.